Once long ago, three tigers came to Africa. They went to the country of the animals and made this terrible announcement. From now on, this land will be ruled by the tigers. We are after all the strongest, fastest, and wisest of all the animals. Therefore, we are the only fit rulers. They claim. A little mouse spoke up from the crowd. But we have a council where we make our decisions together. We don't need or want any ruler. One of the tigers let out a roar so loud and fierce that the poor mouse started running and didn't stop until he was in the land of the humans. To this day, he lives in the house of humans. Her cousin, the field mouse, misses her terribly. The other animals didn't like that idea much either, but they looked at those tigers' big claws and sharp teeth and were afraid to speak. These tigers were even bigger than the lions. Finally, a Nazi spoke. Great tigers, it is clear that you are strong, fast, and wise. But just so that everyone will know for sure that you are stronger, faster, and wiser than anyone else, let us have a contest. A Nazi suggested. The tigers liked the idea, so a Nazi continued. Let us prepare ourselves. Then tomorrow we will choose someone to compete against each of you. So the tigers left, and the animals held a private meeting to discuss what to do. The next morning, the animals were ready. The tigers came to the council circle. The strongest tiger spoke first. Who will compete against me? He asked. I will, said the tiny voice of the field mouse. The tiger laughed until he cried. <laughs> this will not take long. He said, Who will race me? Roared the swiftest tiger. I will. This is no contest at all! Shouted the tigers. Hare told the third tiger, I must bring it to the home of the owl. She be the wisest of all the creatures. We will see said the tiger. First was the contest of strength. The field mouse brought the tiger to a large clearing. They each stood at one edge of the clearing with one end of a rope. Between them was placed hundreds of big thorn bushes. When she gave a signal of two short tugs on the rope, the tiger was to start pulling. The loser would get dragged across the thorns. The tiger laughed at the little mouse and said that he was ready. She gave the signal and the tiger began to pull. What he didn't know was that behind the field mouse, standing in the forest, was a great bull elephant holding onto the rope. So while the tiger pulled on one end, the elephant pulled on the other. The tiger got dragged all the way through the thorn bushes and yelling, Ouch! 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 All the way. If this is how strong the mice are, I would hate to see what the other animals can do. He shouted. Next was the race. The tortoise brought the fastest tiger to a five-mile stretch of road in the forest. At each mile marker, one of the tortoise's cousins was hiding. To the tiger, they would all look alike. When the race began, tiger went zooming away, leaving the tortoise in his dust. As he was coming to the first mile marker, the tiger was laughing to himself. How could a tortoise think he could outrun me? He said. Just then, Tortoise came out from his hiding place behind the mile marker. What took you so long, Mr. Tiger? He asked politely. Tiger was shocked. How did you get here so fast? He screamed. Tortoise didn't answer. He just slowly plodded off toward the next marker. The tiger zoomed past him and ran at top speed to the second mile marker only to find Tortoise sitting there waiting. I really thought tigers were faster than this. He said, sounding very disappointed. I'll beat you! I'll beat you yet! shouted the tiger as he sped to the next marker. At the third marker, Tortoise was sitting down playing a game of Mancala with Anansi and laughing about how easy the race was. Tiger couldn't believe his eyes. At the fourth marker, Tortoise was asleep, snoring loudly. The tiger sped by him so fast he left the tortoise spinning like a top. 
Finally, Tiger was racing toward the finish line. Tortoise was nowhere in sight. Tiger was running at full speed. Nothing could stop him now. Yet, as he got closer to the line, he noticed a little brown thing sitting there. It, it must be a rock, he told himself. But as he got closer, he saw that the little head and those four little legs, and he knew Tortoise was already there. It's, it's impossible! He screamed. But no matter how much he screamed, it didn't change the fact that Tortoise had won the race. Now, Hare was bringing the third tiger to the home of the wisest old owl. But the hare kept complaining of stomach pains and said that he couldn't walk very well. Can't you get someone else to show me the way? Said the tiger angrily. I'm the only one who knows the way, whispered the hare. It's sacred. The tiger was irritated. Then you will just have to ride on my back, he said. They rode on for a little while, but the hare kept letting himself slide off the tiger's back so they weren't making much progress. If you bring me to my house, I can get my saddle, the hare suggested. That way I won't slip off. So the tiger brought the hare home and let the hare put a saddle on him. And if you let me use these reins, hare continued, I can steer you left or right without talking so much. I got a sore throat, you know. The tiger agreed. Then the hare went into his house, came out wearing spurs and carrying a whip. Wait a minute, said the tiger. What's all that for? Oh, I just wear these spurs for show, hare said. And the whip is so I can keep the flies off you while you give me a ride. All right, said the tiger. But be careful. So they rode on, but not to Owl's home. They went right to the council circle. All the other animals were gathered there. When Hare came in sight of the other animals, he dug the spurs into the tiger's side and snapped the whip against the tiger's backside, yelling, Giddy up, horsey! The tiger went jumping and howling through the crowd, looking about as foolish as a fool can look. All the animals laughed and laughed. The other tigers were so embarrassed that they pleaded with the hare to stop. The hare got off the tiger's back and took his saddle and reins. Those tigers agreed never to come back to Africa again. That's why, to this day, there are no tigers in the forests of Africa. And everyone got along fine in the land of animals, with everyone as equals. No kings, no queens, no rulers.